Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Revealing God. And today I want to cover a topic. Um, it was a question presented to me by one of my friends on Facebook. And of course, she already knew the answer, but she thought it was a good question that people might have anyways. And so the question is, can you get to heaven by just being a good person? And the uh, short answer is no. All right. Well, have a good day. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. Anyways, as always, we'll uh, start by looking into the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about it. And, um, and then I'll give you my two cents. Not that that's really worth much anyways. But uh, let me share my screen here with you. All right, so can you get to heaven by just being a good person? Romans 10, 9 through 8. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. John fourteen six says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And finally, Titus 3, 5 through 6. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that's what the Bible has to say about it. So basically, again, the answer is no, you can't just be a good person and go to heaven. Um, there is only one way to get to heaven, and that is through the belief in Jesus Christ. Now, in the Bible, there's two covenants that have been made with the people by God, right? The Old Covenant, which is covered by the Old Testament, and that, as we discussed before, is it required like sacrifices of animals, it could be grain sacrifices, um, wine, oil sacrifices, it could be all different kinds of things. But um, and then you had the Ten Commandments that you had to follow, which are still important today. Don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, there was there was a very strict ritualistic way to get to heaven. And then the Lord made a new covenant with the people and he sent his only son to uh, be our sacrifice to atone for our sins. And the only real requirement of that um, covenant is that a, we believe that Jesus is the son of God and B that we believe that he died on the cross and was raised again and that he is our savior. And so it's, it's pretty easy, the requirements getting to heaven. Now, that's not to say that it's easy to believe in Jesus, because for a lot of people, it is not easy to believe in Jesus, right? Um, I had a period of time where I was an atheist, and um, this was after growing up Catholic. But of course, I listened to the professors who I thought were, of course, way smarter than me, right? And you couldn't possibly lie in a, in a college to your students. So, um, I believed in the whole evolution thing and, and whatnot. And so believing in Jesus at that time was not easy for me. And it was after a lot of soul searching and prayer and whatnot that I was able to, um, come back to the Lord and prayer by my family and friends, um, too. But, uh, yeah, so it's 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 easier said than done a lot of times, I would say. Um, 
But uh, and and you'll see in in a couple of those verses, it specifically mentions that you know this is not your salvation is not based on anything that you have done. So you you can't earn your way into heaven by being a good person. You can't earn your way into heaven by doing good deeds. Um, and honestly, you probably can't earn your way out of heaven by doing negative things. And that's, I think that's another obstacle for many people in considering Christ um, is that, yeah, as Christians, we're people too, right? We screw up all the time. Um, not me, but you know, my wife, Lori, she screws up all the time. <laughs> just, just kidding, honey. Don't beat me. But, uh, anyways, you know, and so we're human, right? And so we tend to do negative things in our lives. And, um, some of them are pretty evil. And from the outside, it's easy for somebody who's not a believer to look at that and say, oh, look at those hypocrites, right? They're Christians. They say they believe in Jesus, but they're cheating on their husband or they're cheating on their taxes or they're stealing from their neighbor or whatever. You know what I mean? And so it's easy to point that out. Um, of course, those people fail to realize that they're holding the Christians to a standard that they would never be able to meet either because all have fallen short of the glory of the Lord, right? No, none of us meets God's standard and that's why we need Jesus Christ in our lives. And so that tends to be a huge obstacle for people when they're considering um, becoming a Christian and having Jesus as their savior. And so it's something that we kind of got to take into consideration as Christians. We are supposed to lead good lives. We are supposed to try and follow Christ's example as best as we can, right? But in the end, we're human. So, um, but the last thing you want to do as a Christian is to make somebody stumble. Like you don't, you don't want to make a new Christian stumble. You don't want to make somebody that's considering Christianity or following Jesus stumble. You don't want to push them away because God's going to look unfavorably on that. Right. And just because you have a spot in heaven doesn't mean that you're not going to be held accountable for the stuff that you do here on earth. Okay. There's still going to be some accountability to that. Um, just like, <clears throat> Let's say our daughter, Hannah, right? Let's say when she was little, and this is this didn't happen. I'm just making this up, okay? Hannah's a little angel, so um, love her to death. But let's say that Hannah broke one of Lori's rules for the house, right? And she wasn't supposed to be on her phone after 10 o'clock at night, okay? And Hannah decides... I'm going to wake up at 11 and I'm going to get on my phone and chat with my little friends or whatever boyfriend or whatever it's fictional. So it doesn't matter who she's talking to. <clears throat> well, Lori finds out about it because in this instance, you know, in, in this, um, correlation, Lori would be like God, right. And God knows everything that's going on. So Lori finds out about it. She knows about it. And, there's going to be consequences to Hannah breaking the rules, but that doesn't mean that Lori's going to kick her out of the family. That doesn't mean that Lori's not going to love her. That doesn't mean that Lori loves her any less, right? Same applies with God is that, you know, as Christians, we're going to screw up. It's, it's given. I promise you that we are going to screw up. If, if there is one thing in this world that I can promise you, is that we are going to screw up that and Jesus is King, but we are going to screw up. I'm not big on promises because I don't like making promises that may or may not come true. Um, but that's, that's a promise. Those are two promises that I can make to you is Jesus is, is the Lord and that, uh, people are going to screw up. We're going to, um, but God doesn't love us any less. God isn't going to kick us out of heaven because we screwed up. 
and um you know god we're we're still gonna have to you know be held to account once we get to heaven right he's still gonna probably have a chat with us about all the things we've done in our life good and bad right because there's a lot of people um i have a a good friend her name's sarah and she um runs a uh, an organization that helps with disabled veterans who were injured by um, vaccines specifically um, uh, the anthrax vaccine but she also represents people who um, are underrepresented by the medical establishment and the va right that's what this this green band is for here okay it says breaking the silence supporting all patients okay so um shoot i forget where i was going with that oh yeah there we go and came back to me uh anyway she is building up her treasures in heaven with all the good works that she does right um and she keeps her faith in jesus if if she keeps her faith in jesus if she believes in jesus we'll say that um those treasures are stored up in heaven right and she will have an accounting with god about not just the bad things that she may have done in her life but also all the good things that she's done and she has helped a lot of people um and so i i encourage you to check out her uh, facebook page um if i'm not mistaken i believe it's called operation truth um if not, I will correct it and put it in the notes on my YouTube page and whatnot. But uh, anyway, so that was just an example, right? There's people out there who give and give and give and give and give. Um, I got one of my good buddies. A lot of you probably know him, Jason Brown. He uh, recently stepped down from being president of Outdoors for Our Heroes, but he has helped hundreds of disabled veterans um, you know, not just on hunting experiences, but healing and whatnot. A lot of you know my story, um, especially if you've gotten my book, get my book. Um, and uh, but Outdoors for Our Heroes and Jason in particular helped me out a lot with my healing process. And so um, all of those good works are stored up in heaven um, for Jason. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be monetarily stored up treasures in heaven right um it could be good works it could be that so are is being a good person going to get you to heaven no is being a good person person important yes and uh, so hopefully that clears that question up and uh, if anybody has any more questions please 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 Get a hold of me either through Facebook or on my YouTube channel or my website or wherever and uh, ask your question because I would love to answer them for you. Um, let's go ahead and end in a prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day, God. And uh, I thank you just being selfish here for um, allowing me to live in beautiful Kansas, God. I feel so free and uh, it's amazing here. Um, but Lord, I want to pray for those people who are new in the faith, God, or are considering the faith, Lord. And I want you to encourage them, God, give them the inspiration that they need, Lord. I ask that you um, show them the evidence that they need, Um to believe in you, Lord, and have that faith because everybody needs a certain level of evidence before they can be pushed to that faith level. And the evidence is all around us, Lord. All we have to do is open our eyes and look around and we can see you absolutely everywhere as long as our eyes are open. So God, I pray that you open these people's eyes and um, let them know that not only that they are loved by you, God, but they are loved by us as well. And Lord, we pray for our country as always and uh, the rest of the world, but in particular, our country, Lord, uh, we need some help. And, and honestly, we've dug ourselves a hole so big that the only way out is through Jesus. And 
Um, no one man's going to save us, God. I know that most likely tr President Trump is your um, select president uh, based on prophecies, which maybe we'll get to that on another episode. But um, God, President Trump alone isn't going to save us. We need you, Lord, and you're the only one that can save us. So we ask that you do this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And guys, thank you so much. Sorry to get a little uh, selfish in that prayer and thank him for living in Kansas. But as you can see, um, sun's out, gun's out, right? So anyways, love you guys. Oh, by the way, representing the PNW today. Can't really see it because Lori yelled at me and told me I needed to raise my computers and you guys aren't looking up my nose the whole time. But uh, anyways, love you guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please like, share, subscribe to the YouTube. Um, if you haven't yet, get my book and uh, I will talk to you later.